Some acoustic electrics don't play nice with your strap. Instead of cutting or forcing your strap ends, give CinchFit a try. The CinchFit comes in two varieties, one for Fishman and Switchcraft jacks, and one for Taylor's expression system. Diderio's got you covered. Hey, what's up guys? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here at the Basement East in um, East Nashville, Tennessee with one of my favorites, Ken Andrews. If you don't know who this guy is, then open a new browser. We're talking failure, your gear of the rabbit. Oh man, I got so many new questions for you because it seems like every time I hear a record, I'm like, damn, this sounds so good. Brr, Wikipedia, you mixed it. That Citizen, oh, the new yeah. Citizen record Citizen is like, yeah. the first time I heard it, I was like, man, this mix is flawless. Who did this? I'm mm. sure shit. It's oh, thank you. So thank hey, man, I appreciate your work on top of obviously failure. Yeah. Um, not a whole, whole lot has changed since last time, but a kind of a lot has changed, starting with this beautiful thing right here. Yeah, <laughs> got a new guitar from Electrical Guitar Company, Kevin Burkett. Um, he makes all aluminum metal guitars. He makes his own pickups. Uh, and he gave me one um, maybe four or five years ago. Like the Silver Les Paul The Silver one. Les Paul one, which I really, I got into it. I was really into it. So he said, well, do you want to make your own? And I said, yeah, <laughs> let's make it all black. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, Jazzmaster style body. Probably, he says, the lightest neck they've ever made. I mean, especially with the headstock, it's all hollow. And Oh, really? Because, yeah, with the metal, you're dealing with, you know, a pound or so more than a normal guitar. A normal guitar. But the other problem is keeping it so it doesn't do that. Do thing. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we worked a while on the weight for sure. Actually, added back a little bit down here to keep it more to balanced. balanced. Um, and that, and then I was like, can we add a, a, a piezo system? Because I've always wanted to have that for live. Because we have on our records, we have a lot of acoustic guitar, um, and it's always been a bit of an issue. Just we basically did it with clean, you know, like a, a Fender guitar and through a twin in the fractal or something, and it, it's cool, but nothing it's quite not like acoustic. the snappy attack yeah. of, of the acoustic. So now I've got, um, you know, with just a couple uh, button presses here, I can go from a crunchy sound to a full... Pretty convincing acoustic sound. No, yeah. I mean, it's... For a know, metal electric guitar. For a full electric guitar. <laughs> yeah. And the great thing is, for, for, for me, is that it's just... It's one button push with the feet rather than having to do something on the guitar right. uh, while you're singing and playing is a little tricky. So yeah, this has kind of been a, a bit of a holy grail for me getting super, that. Super dumb question. Yeah. Does this play anything like a jazz master? <laughs> Not really. Is it um, its own thing? No, it plays more like a, a, an EGC. Oh, okay. It, well, that's yeah. what I say, because which, which I love because what you have happening here with um, with uh, the all um, uh, metal necks is that there's no tapering, right? You like right. most necks have to widen out a little bit at the base here for strength. Oh, now that you're mentioning it, yeah, that See width how is almost identical. It, it, is, it is. It's identical, completely yeah. identical, and with a cutaway going this low, I mean, you, you have get up there. massive access here to all your. Um, and we do, you know, a lot of we do a lot of chords up here and arpeggiation up here, so it's pretty awesome for that. The other thing that's great is because of the super um, kind of fine tolerances of of the neck um, and the bridge. The intonation is Ooh. just awesome on this guitar. I mean, you can play you know, a G here and a G all the way up here. It's dead on. And it's dead on, or very, or very close. I would uh, imagine since it's not wood and it's not, you know, subject to humidity changes and being thrown in a trailer in Canada and opened up in California, I'm sure it's like, you know. It doesn't do the wild swings that wood will do. It does do, it does have its own little peculiar uh, <laughs> tuning and temperature thing though. It does? It still moves a little bit mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, 
It's a metal. Metal actually expands and contracts sure. with temperature. No, norm, normally, with a wood guitar, when you're playing, it, it tends to go flat, right? Because you, your hands warm up the strings okay. and the whole guitar, um, that makes sense. and it and it, you generally are flat, and then you and you you know come up after a couple songs. With these guitars, they tend to go sharp, and I, I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's because the neck is expanding a little bit and pulling the pulling. strings tighter. Yeah. Um, but once you get over that initial temperature hump, they are just, they stay. Hunkered in, huh? They, yeah. Love so. that. And it's just so cool looking. Though. Yeah. All right, so walk us through these, these switches and knobs, because mm -hmm. you got the piezo, I'm guessing, here. Yeah, okay. that's the volume. So you can, can you blend the, that in with the other pickups at the same time? You can. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, it's a, it's a TRS cable, so if you go in, it's a stereo cable, so if you go in with a mono cable, then you're blending uh, using this knob. Okay. Basically, you're blending between acoustic, but I'm coming out separately into two different um, transmitters. Okay. And into two separate receivers. Those receivers uh, uh, feed two separate inputs on the fractal. Gotcha. And they can be processed and turned on and off separately, separately. per patch or per scene. Now that's a hell of a workaround. <laughs> that is yeah. so cool. It gets kind of complicated, awesome. but I like it. I like it. I like it too. So are, these are available now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just They're on the website. The Electrical Guitar Company. That's so rad. That's so cool, man. Uh, I'm a fan. It looks really cool. All right. Another uh, change since our last rig rundown. I don't see any of those huge sun cabs on stage that you guys were using for feedback. You must have found something to. Yeah. That. Well, we. Were, I mean, truth be told, we were using those for feedback and also for part of the set. Sure. Basically. Lights. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And um, they look cool. And they were cool, and they did work for feedback, but eventually they uh, broke and <laughs> stopped working, and it became too expensive to. to and they got a suck to lug around. Those things are huge. And they were huge, so we, we got rid of those, and we've gone to a no speaker uh, on stage situation, except our 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 sound man Dave Gomez will put wedges around the stage pointing towards the audience. So people in front can so get a little So people in front can hear some guitar and some vocals and stuff if, they're, if the PA is a little out forward. Yeah. Or line array or something way out in front of everybody. Sure. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, we've kind of just streamlined that whole thing and it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of easier. And, and then for feedback, we, you know, there's a couple different feedback pedals out now. Uh, the w one we're, we're using a lot of right now is, well, Greg's using it, the, uh, the Freak Out pedal. Oh, yeah, Digi Digitech, right? Digitech, yeah. yeah. Um, he's got, you know, with my pedal board, I keep everything in the fractal. I don't have, I do have a couple pedals in the back of my fractal that are inserted on different, on the different um, I.O. Mm -hmm. on the back there. But I don't have any audio on my pedal board. It's just a MIDI controller. Greg has a, pe a separate uh, pedal board that's before his fractal, where he can do, um, you know, a some couple some of, kind of crazy, yeah. crazy feedback, sustained S ambient stuff. S where you'd have a synth pad or something, mm. he's kind of doing more interesting guitar patty stuff. Now we've had the 16, the GT 16s now for for a few years. Um, you know, the, I've I've laid mine out different, a little differently now. Um, Can I, you name uh, scenes in the new Axe Effects? That's 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 the the Fractal Axe Effects three. The one of the big uh, pluses for us was that you can name your scenes. Yeah. I remember last and time we talked, you were like, "You guys gotta fix this." You got, it's just, yeah. because we're we use scenes a lot. Sure. At least you know six, seven, eight scenes for guitar per song, so now you can name them in the fractal, and then the RJM can now pull them down. And display it for you. So you don't have to enter into two separate devices separately. Uh, I see. So you can actually manage a set list in the fractal with the RJM now, instead of having the RJM do the set list. Handy. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of nice, and I've, I reserve these three guys right here for triggering main stage samples. Oh, okay. Depending on the song, um, there's nothing in stuck on you. Um, this is just my preset up, right? Um, and then I dedicate these four guys over here to a function in the fractals 
that was on in the Axe FX 2s as well. It's I call it the trimming function, where if you're on a given scene and you just feel like, well, the way the band's playing with this section of the song, I need to be down a dB or up a dB. Right. You hit that and it bumps that scene up or down one dB and saves it and memorizes that and memorize it right then so it's a great feature for trimming scenes and presets during sound checks sure. and rehearsals well and every room's a little different i'm sure that affects things as well yeah yeah uh, so the last time we talked i was blown away so i was like okay i gotta we gotta get an axe effects it's been a, a very arduous learning process yeah and it's cool i recently got the chance to review the three mm -hmm. which i found a lot of cool little workarounds in the three that were left out of the two. Actually, uh, Chris and I had the chance to go talk to Billy Howardell about this because when he first got the three, he was like, you guys gotta check this out. It does this and this and this. 99% of what he said was like completely over my head. Yeah. But there were some things like, you know, um, you know, if you don't have a, a, a controller, mm -hmm. which, you know, for guys that aren't that's doing an failure. That's an expensive controller. Yeah, that's a yeah. very expensive controller. Yeah, it's almost you know? as much as the Fractal. Right, yeah. so I love the display on the front. I also love that when you're building a patch, it doesn't have to be at the very beginning of a chain t for it to get signal. I don't know if you've noticed that, but when you're building you know, a, a rig yeah. or whatever, you can kind of put it anywhere. Anywhere you want. Yeah, and yeah. it'll automatically have an in and out, which I think is a, a huge time yeah, saver. Yeah, a huge time <laughs> setting up yeah. the blocks, yeah. What mm -hmm. else, um, you know, how, how hard was the change from two to three? Well, um, I would say very hard. <laughs> to That's be exactly what Billy honest. said too. Yeah, all right. Because you know, I I, I love Fractal as mm. a company, and I love their product. Uh, it's 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 a game changer, really, yeah. from, for the way we use it. Um, you know, the if I did have, uh, you know, something to say about how they're they're moving. Uh, from one hardware unit to the other. The thing of it is, is Cliff is the, the owner. He's chasing the ultimate emulation mm -hmm. of, of real amps. He owns hundreds of real amps himself. He's an amp collector. He's a player. Um, that's his holy grail, is getting you know, the amp emulations to be exact. so... You know, that we're, where you just can't say anything. And that's a, that's a great goal. Unfortunately, what happens though is that he's changing like the amount of parameters per blocks and what those parameters do. You know, it's, he's leaving some behind, adding new ones to get to, to achieve this, you know, better and better emulations. But for the touring band who's trying to move, say, I don't know, 60 songs <laughs> over to a, a whole new device. It's, it was a little frustrating that they wouldn't just open it up as and sound the same. They, oh, they just they, they didn't. They didn't. So after moving everything over to the new hardware, you still had to go in and tweak quite a bit. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I mean the the, the what is saved is the the routing. Okay. You know, and and some of the effects like you know a flanger pedal and stuff. A lot of that didn't change too much, but the amps changed a lot. Really. The amps were like to to get back to where we were would involve you know quite a bit of changing and going because there's all new pages of parameters right. now in the amp blocks so it took a while once i got it down though like you know i i, I saved like a, um a friedman um brown eye that we use a lot in a lot of different songs i just save that as like a block preset gotcha. essentially that i can use in a lot of different songs yeah, I didn't realize that that was such a big change. It's a big change. Yeah, Which it's a big change. Billy actually mentioned that too. He's, he was kind of like when we, w last time Chris and I got to hang out with him, we were shooting a riff rundown. Which if you guys haven't seen the riff rundown, it's it's, it's fun. Learn some riffs. It's great. But he was uh, incorporating an aux box and all this stuff. So he was kind of like, I, I, I felt like he might have been a little overwhelmed until he really got his head around it. And so yeah. a lot of the guys we talk to have that same, you know, they feel the same way. And and. Personally, I talk to a lot of guitarists that are like, nah, I'm kind of sticking with the two because it's, I've got it dialed in and I know what it does. And then there's a lot of guys jumping to the three. So I just kind of wondered, you know, what your take was you, on for, it. Well, for me, it would, being able to name scenes, the faster uh, channel switching within blocks in the three yeah. compared to the there's two. Less of a latency. Live, there's less right? of a latency. Um, 
uh, and, and a couple other features were kind of, it was kind of a no-brainer. But I knew it was going to be, be rough sailing, so I started the migration two, three months ago. So oh, you, you blocked out time because you knew it was going to happen. Well, yeah, yeah what, weekends. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get that. Um, yeah, yeah, just chipping away. And, and so by the time this tour started, I was only short maybe a, two songs. Oh, you know, wow. And I was able to do those in rehearsal. Very cool. Um, this thing as a writing tool, is this like uh, an inspiring piece of gear to you? Because, you know, I know you have a studio and you have real amps yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But... Well, we use Fractal exclusively in the studio you when do? we're making the albums. Yeah. Ah, okay, I was going to ask yeah. because yeah, no. If it's, you've got it dialed in, you know, live, obviously you took all this time to really, really yeah. hone it in. I mean, when you've used it as 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 long as I have now, like I can get a if I'm looking for a sound in my head, I can get it in like five minutes, ten minutes. Oh usually. wow. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's just learning that language. Y yeah. Does does that come from like working with like M83 and like learning more digital? like stuff. more like a less traditional like you know uh tracking and more you know um, studio based stuff i mean yeah sure i mean pro tools and uh, you know the, the whole digital recording stuff it, it forces you to learn um digital signal flow and all that stuff and if you also the experience of actually owning and maintaining a full analog rig in the 90s <laughs> Which is basically what you know. Fractal is, is is bases their user interface off of that. You know, right. you're still dealing with chains, where you're putting pedals, where in they the go chain, in that chain, and where's sure. the amp going in the cabinet and all that stuff. So it, it, you know, a familiarity with a, an analog system is good too, just to kind of have a baseline of understanding that you plug your guitar into the amp first as opposed to the cabinet right <laughs> <laughs> which you can easily reroute wrongly in a fractal i know that is a really hard thing yeah because it's that easy to mess up yeah we're so right about that so yeah so all that and, and just the sheer amount of time i've spent programming sounds for the previous tours in like 2014 and 15 so we, when, when we went into the studio to make this record the fractal was like you know a, a piece of my uh, everyday gear. Rig. Yeah, yeah, it's your rig. So yeah. it's like, okay, Greg's like, I want like um, a voxy kind of, you know, breaking up sound, but still kind of chimey mixed with like a twin with that has a fuzz pedal in front of it. Okay. Got you. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> so cool. You know, it's like, rather than like going out to the garage, pulling all those things sure. out of their cases, miking them up, Pissing off the neighbors. So this this song I was talking about it earlier. The the main patch for uh, the verses of Undone is probably one of the more sophisticated um, fractal patches I've written. You've got the guitar um, coming here, but it's a stereo input. One side is acoustic. One side is the magnetic pickups. I split them off here. So now you're running, they're running separately. The top is the acoustic and the bottom is the magnetic. And then you've just got, so the, the, the acoustic is hitting, it is hitting an amp. Um, I thought it was a touch screen for a second there. <laughs> a jazz chorus, right? It's like Makes sense. the yeah. most neutral sounding kind of V'd out head. Um, Interestingly, I don't think I'm using a cabinet with it huh. because then it gets a little too dark and you lose that kind of chiminess of the top of the acoustic. Yeah. Or but it's getting its own chorus, stereo chorus, stereo de delay. Then it jumps down here and sort of joins the magnetic uh, processing and then they both come out a stereo output one. Um, what's interesting about the magnetic line, here's the head for it, the amp. Um, and then what I do is I'm going out an output on the back of the fractal into a pedal, returning the pedal here, bringing that back in. And what that pedal is doing, it's the TC Electronic Mimique pedal. Have you heard of this pedal? Yeah. It ends with a Q. Mm -hmm. It's a doubler pedal. 
Um, like a double tracking? A double yeah, tracking yeah. thing, but it, the, I've never seen a pedal do it quite the way they do it. It's, it's a proprietary, it's a digital pedal, so it's, it's sort of cloning your sound, and then it's doing a non-repeating modu slight modulation and s delays the same way you would actually double track something. And if you hard pan those in the ears and in the mains, it's pretty convincing double track for, e for even for crunch chords and That's stuff. That's awesome. So, and I haven't found a way to do, that algorithm is to not in the fractal. So we are using those, both Greg and I have Mimique pedals in the back of the rack here. And then we, we also have um, Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machines because that pedal is just awesome. a crazy pedal. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> so it's awesome for leads. Um, so yeah, so you know, that's, this, this is that kind of a little dangerous running at 82, 83 on the, on the uh, uh, Fractal 3, uh, Axe FX 3. This, you wouldn't be able to run this on the 2. Huh. It would be Too much. way over. Gotcha. Be way, it'd be, be like 130%. Um, so yeah. Going from the old Axe FX to the new Axe FX, I know it was a little bit tricky for you, but yeah. there are songs that people my age, that was like the sound of our high school. So can I hear just some of like, sure. some of the patches that you have for maybe like sure. Saturday well, this Savior was, or This song in particular is from an uh, album we did in uh, 94, Magnified. And in the verses, the, the amount of guitar layering we did in the studio was pretty extreme. Sure. It was like, three or four electric guitars, a couple acoustics. Um, Eight channels. <laughs> you know, some clean guitars in there too. Wall of sound stuff. Yeah, wall yeah. of sound. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's always been a frustration not quite getting there for live. Um, but I, I worked on this verse, this verse patch for, I don't know, a few hours, and I was really excited about it, because in the, in the Axe FX3, you've got way more horsepower, almost double the amount of horsepower. Yeah, the it. processor is like twice as powerful, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this, is, this sound is, is using both the magnetic pickups and the acoustic. There's a couple synth blocks in there. I mean, it's... <laughs> If you are able to hear that in stereo, wherever you're listening, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so just so you know, there's no monitors on stage. They're only going through the house, so I can barely hear it. But yeah, totally I hear convinced. it right here because I've got one, oh, of, my, okay. one <laughs> of my ears in. Yeah, but very convincing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's 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 fun. It's if you like to tweak, um, it's a, it's a fun box. Yeah. Hell yeah. This is just like a basic crunch sound I use for like the the choruses of Stuck on You. <laughs> So that's a real basic, you, you know, it's just those two sounds for that song. Then, um, I mean, how long was something like that for, for you to figure out? So question, obviously you knew, you, you, pr you produced like Fantastic Planet in these records, so like did you just say, oh, on that I was using a JTM and a, you know, if I remember, like basket weave. Yeah. yeah, is that what you do, just start there? I remember and then I just listen to the records. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and in the case of the Earball. newer records, um, you know, I have the stems. Right. Right. So that's really convenient for both sound forging for live and also for rehearsing too. I can rehearse uh, my parts, singing and guitar and bass, at home for like a week before we all get together in the studio. And it just makes it so when we, we, we do get together in the rehearsal space, we're all up to speed. Right. Saving a lot of time. Being able to play sure. the parts and stuff. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of. The technology is making things uh, uh, easier and also like a little more, it's a little more fun and a little less, uh, you know, waiting for someone to learn a part or why isn't your sound dialed in, you right. know, like. Here's a Dropbox file. See you yeah, in a week. Here's the stems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Mute your parts and play along. <laughs> I love that. Well, Ken, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to walk us through all of this stuff and uh, showing us how you use it. 
super rad guitar. Thank you. Hats off to ECG. That's that's really really cool. Yeah. Um, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more rig rundowns, lessons, all that fun stuff. We'll catch you next time.